Hey, welcome back once again to Tips from the Server Room. This is episode number 123 for February the 24th, 2018. I am your host, I am your host Jack. And I'm going to be guiding you through, into, and out of the world of technology, networking, systems administration, and all things IT. Please check out my website at tipsfromtheserverroom.com where you can also comment on these shows, and thank you very much for commenting. And many of you are now commenting on these videos on YouTube, and thank you very much for commenting there. Uh, it's a great way to stay in touch, and it's a great, great, great way to hear from everybody out there. My videos can be found on YouTube, and that's at 42 Technoman. The number 4, the number 2, T-E-C-H-N-O-M-A-N. Again, I picked that name a long time ago, so it is what it is. You can email me with questions or ideas for future shows, and I wish you would, because that's going to help me to bring you something new and exciting uh, out there, or something you might just have a question about technology. You can email me at jackstechcorner at gmail.com. You can also follow me on Twitter and as at Technoman. And again, I don't really, you know, if you email me, it's not something I'm going to start spamming you, believe me. It's just uh, a nice way to, to communicate back and forth. So this week, um, I received a lot of emails that said, look, Jack, uh, you know, you talked a lot last week about solving your issue. Uh, if you remember, we talked about the teachers plugging the network cables from both sides of their phones into two patches on the wall. And I told you I solved that problem, but I never, I guess I missed the whole part of elaborating on what I did to solve that problem. Um, and I actually don't have any with me right here uh, to show you. But what I decided to do was it, was, it was like a simple solution, was to change the color of the jack, the RJ45 network jack, on their wall plug. Um, you know, they were both the standard tan or white or whatever color they had in there. And, well, you know, labeled, of course, they're labeled with um, like data connection one, data connection two, data connection three, whatever you would label your rooms, right? In your office space or wherever, you have to have those labeled so you know back in the rack that you have a consistent labeling uh, type structure. But it didn't really help them because they were both tan. So I couldn't say, I couldn't carbon and say plug into the left jack or the right jack. I guess you could. But that gets a little too confusing. So instead of doing that, what I decided to do was, it was so simple. We purchased green network jacks and blue network jacks. Now the teachers know that if it's a blue network jack, that is for your computer. They can plug their laptop into there and um, use that jack as a data jack. And the green jack, the green jack is set up as their phone jack at this point. Uh, and remember, they're all uh, TCP IP VoIP phones, right? So uh, that is what it is. And it worked out extremely, extremely well. We go in the room now and you'll see that there's only one, uh, one cable plugged in. And it's plugged into the green jack. And furthermore, on my jacks, now when I label them, uh, the blue jacks are now labeled uh, D, like D1, D2, D10, whatever. And that is simply the, the data jack uh, going to whatever switch. And the the green ones we're labeling with V uh, just it makes really good sense. It's it's like um, we often say it's, it's a common sense type deal, right? So you got the voice one, voice two, voice three, and so forth and so on. And it worked out extremely well for us to do this, and uh, it's been it's been working for the teachers. Now the next part that's going to help you out probably even um, more so. Um, well, I mean it still can happen that they can cross those lines, but. On your switch, you know yourself that we don't want to trunk every single port because we could take, and we have done this before, a phone jack, and uh, we put that on the phone VLAN, and then we can also tag that port to one of our uh, data VLANs. And what that allows us to do is if we're tagging it, and these are on extreme switches, folks, so if we tag it on extreme switch, it's telling us switch that it's going to go through and it's going to get an IP address from the DHCP server. Uh, and when it's untagged, I'm sorry, reverse those. When it's untagged, it gets an IP address. When you tag it, uh, that would be the uh, equivalent of a Cisco trunk port. 
Uh, so you're tagging that, and you can tag as many VLANs on that port as you wish to do. So we tag it as a phone, and we untag it as a data port. But if you want to make it just a phone, just simply set it up on your VLAN on your switch and VLAN it for, for the phone uh, side, and uh, the same on the data side. This, uh, so if they plug a phone into the data side, it won't work because it's not going to get back to the phone uh, switches and the phone server, and it's just not going to actually come on. So they, they will get a network error because it will receive power if you have that plugged into your PoE switch, and we'll talk about PoE another day. Um, we probably have talked about in this show a million times, but it's something that we'll have to bring up to, uh, to you another day. So that is how we alleviated our issue with those switches uh, and with those ports. Um, so does it still happen that they plug them both in? Sure, it does. Um, another good thing, if you work for a school district, um, you know, the last school I worked for, uh, when I walked in there, it, it was a, a royal mess. Uh, it took, you know, probably at least a year to two years just to get it under control. Um, they had it really, uh, really a wreck. Um, but, uh, and I understand it. It's funny because after you leave a place, I mean, now it's a wreck again, um, you know, because I left, I moved on, moved up to bigger and better things to a new district, uh, you know, with, with great greater opportunities there. Um, but unfortunately, they're back into a wreck because they got people in there that don't know what's going on. But anyway, what we found there when I first started, they had six to eight patches in a room. And these switch closets, even though they weren't being used, and you may find this in your organization, is uh, let's say, for instance, if you work even with the um, uh, the cubicles. So you have cubicles, and maybe the people before you decide to put four patches in, which is wonderful. That's okay. It's always great to have expansion. You never know when you need more ports out there. And it's easier to have them initially than to rewire them later. But you have to remember that if those ports are plugged into the switch, then you have possibility for, like we talked last week about the uh, the data, you know, the the the, um, the networking storms, the data storms, and all that problem that we that we face, you know, and because those ports are open, they're not being used. What who's to say somebody doesn't accidentally cross again? Those maybe those two phone lines in there. So what I did was initially was I went through and we toned out. Because nothing, of course, nothing was labeled. So we toned out everything that was going back that was being used. If it wasn't being used, we removed the cables. And what happens when you do that is you find out that instead of needing, you know, 196 ports in your switch rack, uh, you may have only needed 96 ports because they're not all being used anymore. Maybe they were at one time. Um, and that's what we talked about last week was how networks are pretty much living and breathing things, right? Where, you know, they grow and they grow because even my partner now said, well, well, Jack, how does it grow? Um, because when you put it in, you shouldn't touch it. Well, that's not true because we talked about the doctor's offices, one in the printer and stuff. So they do tend to grow and they have to be revisited from time to time, just like firewalls, uh, web filters and everything else which again, we'll talk about that another day. So um, anyway, that's how I cleared that up. It took about a year, uh, almost a year and a half for me and my uh, partner at the time to go through. And um, and I also had different partners, so I had to retrain people along the way uh, until I got one steady partner that was there all the time with me. And we were uh, able to do great things. And that's, that's what you want to do is great things. One of my mottos is when you work in the technology field is never, you know, Whenever you leave a place, always leave it better than when you found it, right? So if you work in a place, you walk in there and it's a horrible mess. Um, and I'm not talking about, you know, I'm not talking down or bad about anybody. I think what happens is um, that instance in the in the last school I worked at, what happened there was they had a guy that kind of knew computers and he kind of knew how to uh, load windows on a computer and uh, he knew how to use a mouse. So they felt that he was probably okay to run their technology department. But what happens is technology grows, and we talked about continued education. Um, I am huge on continued education. I, I search for classes and courses all the time. I told you recently I was at a conference, and I just looked. Um, in two days, well, two and a half days, 
I went through 14 classes in two and a half days. And I have notes on all those classes because I think continuing education is huge because if you don't do that, technology changes in such a point where if we talked about that before, people do what they know um, and they don't want to learn anything new. And you have to be able to do that because it's an ever changing industry. Just ask my wife and she'll tell you, I eat, live and breathe technology folks. It's, it's all I do. Um, I mean, I have other hobbies, but as a living, um, you know, I'm in it all time. You know, I'll be up some mornings at four o'clock in the morning or three o'clock in the morning working on something or trying to learn something new. Um, and then, you know, you go to a class just so you can come back and you can apply that back in your network and your data centers. So um, keep up that continued education. It's very, very, very important. Um, and don't, it, it, when you want to do that, when you want to keep up your education, um, check out my, my server course, um, server 2012 R2 at jtclearning.com, jtclearning.com. That's a continuing education course. Uh, right now I'm working on the server uh, 2016 course, so that's going to be coming up. Uh, that's something that I'm still working on putting together. So it'd be something for you to uh, be interested in. Maybe later on down the road, you will find that one there. But anyway, so next thing we're going to talk about here, and uh, for you folks in the car, we're going to try to um, do the best I do the very best I can in communicating this across uh, the the uh, you know the podcast spectrum of this uh, of this show. And for those of you who are watching the video, or if you want to go over to Four Two Techno Man on YouTube and see this video, uh, we are going to the computer now because we are talking about, and I mentioned a little bit last week about uh, Microsoft Teams and how kind of intrigued I am about how Microsoft is starting to pull this together. And they've created some great stuff for business. And when we're working in business, we need to be uh, organized to the point where we're talking with our teams, uh, we're sharing files with our teams. And, and I absolutely love, um, and what I just had it here, actually, um, let me see here. Uh, SharePoint. I love SharePoint. I think it's one of the greatest tools. Um, I never, I've never installed it on a server and ran it. You know, like you would run an Exchange server, you'd have a SharePoint server. I never did that, but and I think I kind of missed out. And again, this is something with continuing education and learning as you go. But now with all the online tools of Office 365, they're bringing this to us, and we don't have to put a lot of thought process into bringing this to our clients because Microsoft is bundling all together. And all you need, I've been looking this week, all you really need is an uh, Office 365 um, business account. And they're relatively cheap. All things considering, if you have a, a, a company or if you're working with a company and they're looking at Microsoft Office and you want to sell some of these products to them, I think it's kind of hard to resell this type of a product to somebody, but if you want to get them interested in it, you know, and what I do is I would sell the person the training around using the tools, but um, man, I tell you what, Teams is putting it together to the point where it's so easy to stay in touch. And even in an office setting where you can have your files somewhere where people can get those without having to have a file share sharing that, them being on the road, maybe you have a sales team or something, and they can't get to it. That's the problem anymore. I told somebody one day that it's almost like the, the desktop applications of Office, although still great, and we still use them, and in the schools they still teach them, but the desktop applications are kind of becoming antiquated to the point where uh, – you're working on one system. I like the cross-platform uh, part of being able to get to my stuff from anywhere. And I was looking on the iPad this morning, and on the iPad and the iPhone, and I'm not sure on Android, so I'm not an Android user, Teams is on there. So I was able to download Teams and put it on my phone, and I was able to download SharePoint and put it on my phone. So it's the best of both worlds. But something I did find in Teams this morning, getting ready for the show, that I was super interested about. And I think it's really cool. I'm going to show it to you here though. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to the computer now. 
So here we are in the computer. I am logged into my uh, office.com account. And we'll see at the very top it says, um, want an even faster experience, a more collaborating experience? Download the desktop app. So they do have the desktop apps. and we, I just said they're getting antiquated, but they're still giving us desktop apps. And the desktop application for Teams, you can just download it. And it does. I have it on my Macs. It works on a Mac and obviously a PC. The first thing you will see at the very top left of Teams is activity. Now, under activity, you'll see where I created a department. So you create a department and my department is called tech department. And I believe I did that under teams. So I went under teams and I right clicked on it and I created a team. So I have a team called tech department. So under activity, this will give you any activity that was flowing for the day. Basically is what's going to happen. Anybody putting messages in there, sharing files out to the team, writing a wiki post. Yeah, it's kind of odd, but there's a built-in wiki, which could be a good thing. Nice place for standardized uh, type notes and stuff, I guess. Um, there is a built-in chat feature. So the chat feature is you're able to sit and actually chat to each other. There's videos in here where you can post your videos up. Maybe you have some training videos or whatever you want to share with your team. Or again, remember, this can be pushed out to your clients, and you're going to show your clients how to use this stuff. That's where it's really, really critical. The next thing we just talked about was Teams itself, where you can right-click and build your own team. Meetings is great because you can set up meetings, and uh, you can build your meetings around different times. Very easy and very efficient. The next thing is files. This is something I wanted to show you that I was very excited about this morning. Because we know that Microsoft uses OneDrive, right? Microsoft is all about OneDrive because OneDrive is owned by Microsoft. And I don't blame them. I've used OneDrive. It's a phenomenal program. I mean, it's a cloud storage program. And it's very easy to use. If you're a Microsoft Office user, and I, I try to sway people, uh, in the school districts anyway, in the schools we use Google. And been doing it for years. That's what schools are migrating to. So as a tech director in a school district, you have to be able to um, change your beliefs and, and work with what you have available. And I had to learn and actually had to become certified and took some uh, Google uh, certification courses to learn more about managing the Google, the Google apps. But, you know, talking with our business teacher uh, at the school, she loves Microsoft Office. She is because she's, she came from the business world, and I understand that, and she loves Microsoft Office. Um, and I'm not ever taking her away from teaching Office because I just had this conversation with her yesterday. We were just sitting chatting for a while, and I said, look, I said, hands down, uh, Microsoft Office is what's in business. And you know that as a consultor, a consulting firm, or if you're a tech director, or if you're working for a company, you know that Microsoft Office is in business, and we have to be able to um, to work with Office. So schools, working as a school technologist gives us the ability to touch a lot of stuff that sometimes people in business don't even see. Uh, a lot of people in business don't even know what a Google Doc is or what it uh, what it would look like. So... But that's okay because, but you know, you have to be uh, diversified, I guess is the word. So anyway, here's what we're going to do is down here at the bottom, I thought this is so cool. Add a cloud storage. I'm like, add what cloud storage? That doesn't make a whole lot of sense. Well, I clicked on add a cloud storage. Look at this. Dropbox. I can now incorporate my Dropbox into Microsoft Office. Share file. So there's share files. So you can use uh, exchange files easily, securely, and professionally. Uh, Box, if you use Box, that's another uh, cloud-based storage service. And Google Drive, such as the schools use. So I can't wait to start playing with this at the school level and maybe bring our Google files that the kids are saving everything to their Google Drive and somehow incorporate that now into the Microsoft Office. And thank you, Microsoft, for creating this. Uh, these connectors are amazing. Um, I have a ton of stuff in, in Dropbox because Dropbox to me is one of the first, as far as I remember, one of the first premier cloud-based storage services out there. And I've used Dropbox for 
ever. And I have stuff in there, tons of stuff in there. I don't know if they still do it, but they used to give away, I think it was five gigs of free storage space for everybody you got to sign up. So I had the bright idea one time of um, getting a lot of the listeners on my YouTube channels, a lot of people out there that listen to my podcast. Um, I put a link somewhere and they were able to sign up and that gave me a lot of free storage with Dropbox. So I have a lot of stuff out there. But yeah, Google Drive, that's cool too. So you can add those. I'm not going to do that right now. But you can see that in recent, these are files that I've had in here. All right. Now, assignments I haven't really played with. Um, it says, uh, we're still setting up your class. Please check back soon. And I don't really know what the assignments are. Um, about, there's about tab there and assignments. So they're setting that up still. So I don't really know what they're doing with that. There's three dots here. Now the three dots is kind of cool because we can open up a OneNote, a planner, streaming video. We can stream video out of here and a who. Here's more apps. And in more apps, there's some more stuff that you can use, uh, such as Adobe Creative Cloud, GitHub, right? We use that. Planner, who, Wic, PO Pin, <laughs> Jury Cloud, Adobe Sign, which is great. People are always looking for new ways to sign documents. And I think I'm going to investigate that sometime because I think it's going to be huge um, to bring to all of you out there. Because remember, we're also doing these shows for the, the consultant working out there. And you're going to get a customer who says, how do I digitally sign a document? Um, and I'm gonna, I'll am dig into that a little bit and learn about it. If you know of a great way, email me and say, hey, Jack, this is, this is what we do. Uh, I know Adobe Sign is one of them. And the thing is also about price, right? Because when we're doing consulting work, you have to have uh, a couple of things. Function, you know, functionability, right? It's got to function, uh, have great functionability. The cost has to be absolutely extremely low or free to be interested to your clients. Um, and it has to be um, easy. The ease of use has to really be there. And if you have all those three things, you're going to be a hit with your, uh, with your customers or with your clients. Even if you're in business, like us in school, we, we got this question just a few weeks ago about how do I digitally sign forms? Uh, somebody wanted to know that. So it's something I need to investigate anyway. The other thing I did find out, I told you last week, I think on the last show, we talked a little bit about, um, I can't remember, about the um, um, being able to use Skype. Remember, Skype business is going to be going away. It is incorporated right into Teams. You can set up a meeting and you can click on it. This is going to be a Skype meeting. Bam, you're done. You're ready to go. Um, so it's it's very, very simplistic to do that. Again, we have ease of use, right? and functionability so but i love teams i think it's going to be a big hit and i hope they keep building on it i think it's going to be wonderful the next thing we're going to talk about just a little bit today on this show and um, we are going to talk about microsoft overload because as much as we like microsoft and as much as microsoft makes and i used to tell people microsoft has made me not a millionaire but microsoft has made me money in my lifetime because and as you watching this show or, or listening to this podcast, uh, you folks are probably at least 80, maybe 90, maybe some of you are 100% uh, Microsoft. That's what you work with, right? Windows, Office, um, and, and you do that type of work. I am probably at this point 70-30 um, uh, maybe, uh, maybe even 80-20. Uh, we have all Windows servers running we have Windows 10 on pretty much every single desktop in the whole entire school district. And that's what we run. But I also get the back end too that I have a Mac laptop uh, that I use at work. And we have a, a Mac laptop for uh, our superintendent at work that they use. Uh, we have a couple other Macs around. So I do get into the Mac scene. Um, as you know, a lot of you know that I do uh, run a lot of Mac stuff at home. So I think it's about 70-30, I think is a pretty fair breakdown. But uh, but anyway, I do have uh, Office on the Macs also, so I can uh, work back and forth. Uh, a lot of people will tell you in the industry, in the computer uh, industry, is you, know, you should know Apple products. I'm not saying rush out and buy yourself a Mac. I mean, okay, that's how I started with it. 
I actually bought a um, a Mac Mini years ago, years ago, uh, when I first got into Macs. And uh, my wife was kind enough at the time to say, yeah, I mean, if, if you need it to learn it, then go ahead and buy it. Because remember, continue education. And I bought it and I learned the insides and outs of it and how to work with it and how to work with the operating system. Um, now I am not really... Um, I'm not really leaning you towards either way. I mean, I'm not saying Macs are better than Windows. Windows are better than Macs. Sometimes I even have, a, but you know, be cross-platform. Know both of them. Uh, know a little bit about Linux enough where you click on something and you're not scared to death uh, to install something like using, uh, you know, like Git, the Git command to install software on Linux. Uh, don't be too scared of it. Um, you don't have to know everything. We don't have to be an expert at that because we, you know. You probably don't have a lot of it in your server racks. Um, anyway, so getting back to this. So Microsoft, though, as much as we love them, sometimes they get on overload because I think they have an Office 365 in their camp. I do believe that they have um, hundreds of thousands of people working or programming this stuff. And they have teams out there doing different things, uh, coming up with new ideas and coming up. Well, and it's one of those old things we used to talk about uh, in business where you would throw things at the wall and see what's stuck, right? So in other words, you throw stuff in business, you, you throw something at the wall and say, oh, people like that, so we're going to do that now. And you'll do something else where uh, you throw something at the wall, but people didn't like it, so you get rid of it. Sometimes I think Microsoft is that way. Uh, that's why I said I hope teams stay around because I hope they feel that it's a hit. Anyway, so in our Office 365 interface now, we see that we have a lot of apps that a lot of us do not use and a lot of our clients probably don't need. Um, some of this is, from what I've seen, unless you buy the very basic version of Office, um, if you're running a business, I would suggest you buy the business version because of Teams and SharePoint. I think those are key to, uh, to people using it for business. But um, you can get away with it. If it's a small uh, attorney's office, maybe they just have the basic version of Office, and they just have Word, Excel, and PowerPoint, um, you know, or the uh, the version of, a version a version of Outlook. Uh, I think that's huge. But uh, like you know, so you got Outlook in here, OneDrive, which we talked about, is our online drive. Word, of course, Excel, PowerPoint, OneNote, which is huge if you're into note taking. And, and I told you, um, I have so many notes in Evernote, and I've been looking. I could convert it. But why? You know, really, I don't know. With Teams, now, I probably won't ever need it. Um, even in our business uh, model is I can still share all my stuff I need to share with, with whoever is working with us uh, on, on the school grounds and uh, share that through Teams. So OneNote, I really don't need it. So I do use Evernote. SharePoint, uh, again, Teams. Then you have a class notebook. Uh, this is great if you are doing uh, a group of work, like a like a classroom. Sway, if you've never seen Sway, I just read an article on Twitter last night about Sway. Sway is, um, for the lack of better terms, an animated PowerPoint, uh, kind of a PowerPoint on steroids. So that is what Sway is. So if you want to use that to make your presentations fancier or uh, sexier, you could do that. Forms is obviously forms, online forms. Uh, I think business would be well suited for online forms. We get too caught up in this world of paper and paper to the point today is, I hate to say it's going away because I do read paperback books still. Um, uh, okay. I do have a Kindle and I, I love my Kindles, but um, paper is just something that it's, it's a clutter. It, you know, it takes up room. I have very little paper on my desk. At work, they always laugh at me because they come in and uh, I've had people come in, salespeople come in and say, you have the cleanest desk we've ever seen. That's because I don't have paper strewn all over my desk. I don't need it. Um, everything's digital. If you hand me a piece of paper, I'm going to scan it with one of my scanning apps like Cam Scanner on my phone. And I and again, I throw that into Evernote, uh, into a scanner folder in Evernote. So I have all those um, because I, I, I don't like the clutter. I tend to lose paper. I you often tell people in a classroom, don't hand me a piece of paper because by the time I get to my office, I probably won't have it. So I, I don't like paper. The admin features, if you're an admin on your Office 365, you have an administrative feature. 
uh, security and compliance, but then you click on explore more apps. And in here, they go over even more apps. So you have stuff in here that you can do. So is it on overload? Yeah, it does get on overload. You can see here my documents uh, on this front page and OneDrive down here. Uh, and also install Office apps. So if you pay for a version of Office that you can install, then you can always install and download the Office apps. What's nice about it in working with our business department is seeing that, and many people don't do this, and we found out people miss this step. When you're in your desktop applications or when your client's using desktop application or somebody in your office complex, and make sure they are using, they're logging into their office applications. The reason you want to do that is when you go to File, Save As, you can save things directly from there to OneDrive. And then if you have a sales team and somebody's on the road and they get their laptop and they're like, oh no, that's on the file server back in the office and I can't get to that. That's not true these days. These days we're very much to the point where uh, everything is, is web-based and as long as we use our, use our programs uh, according to the way they're, they're meant to be used, then you're going to have a better experience because when you're anywhere, any, I've used this. I've been at another school and they said, look, uh, Jack, how do you do something at your school? And I said, man, I wish I would have brought my laptop. Well, they'll say, do you use Office or, or Google? And I'll say, sure, you know, and sure we do. Well, sit down my computer. Well, I can sit at their computer and I can pull my files up. So, you know, and show them maybe what we're doing or what I'm planning on doing. Um, the schools, of course, are a lot different than business. I know if you have a business, and I used to always say, if you ever watched, I don't know how old people are listening to the show or watching these videos, but if you ever watched the Jetsons, and if you're not familiar with that, uh, look on YouTube, you'll find the Jetsons, and they sold Cogswell Cogs. And so if you're making Cogswell Cogs, you may not want to show another business, maybe your uh, OneDrive folder, you don't want to share anything with them, but... That's just one of my inside ways of thinking about this. Okay, folks. So anyway, we're back off the computer now. And, um, you know, really, if you dig into this stuff, it's, it's really great. And I wanted to kind of basically open these shows up to even more. I don't always just want to talk about network switches and that gear. I, like I said, I want these shows to be something that if you work in an office complex or you work in an industry, and maybe you're not somebody that went to school for this stuff. You're not the, uh, the the big tech head. Maybe you're somebody from payroll and you're managing the servers and, you know, not switches, but you're managing the servers. And I want to bring something new to you, to your office that you can share with people and say, look, look what I found. Uh, you can take the credit for it. You don't have to tell them, I listened to tips from the server room and I found this stuff. Nope. So, you know, check it out though. And if you're work, if you're using, we talked about this at work the other day, just as a last final thought for this show. If somebody, if you have a client using Office 2006 or 2007, or even 2000, like 10, I know in business, I worked for a for-profit company and it was nice for me to do that because it was an eye-opener. It was an eye-opener to the fact that if it is working, they don't fix it. If it's working, they don't upgrade because it costs money to upgrade these programs. Here's the downside to that is it's leaving that company, that client, that whoever you have open for security vulnerabilities, right? We have to always worry about that. And that's the big thing. Um, you know, I just seen the other day through the uh, Microsoft Insider program that there is a new version of Office coming out. I can't remember. I think it was Office 2019. I believe it's Office 2019. So, and they, they haven't released, as far as I know, any ISOs yet for me to start looking at it, seeing what they changed. But my, my point here is, if somebody's using Office 2010 or, oh, wow, 2006 or 2007, come on, really? But you'll find people using those older versions, and I know why. Because the ribbon wasn't there. People get freaked out about that whole ribbon thing, and they don't realize that we can turn it off. They don't need to use the ribbon. They can get right back to the old menuing system. Um, but then again, we talked about that, that people want to use what they know, and they get their job done a lot quicker using 
what they know instead of searching around for a tool or something that they need. So, but you'll have that. So, but try to get them to upgrade uh, the best you can. I don't know of any easy way. Um, nonprofits and education is different um, because we get a huge discount on software uh, for the district as well as nonprofits. If you're a nonprofit, there's a place out there. I don't know if you've ever heard of it. It's called TechSoup, T E C H S O U P dot org, uh, where you can buy software for nonprofits, uh, you know, even Microsoft software. Adobe software at a very, very uh, cut rate price. So don't ever pay full price if you're a nonprofit. So those are just some things I wanted to throw out there to you this time on this show. Um, thank you so much for listening, downloading, subscribing to the show. Again, if you're watching this on YouTube, make sure you give it that thumbs up. Spread the word out there. We want the YouTube videos to start taking off. Uh, the viewership on the YouTube videos, and I know, um, I just had this conversation with somebody the other day. Um, what is more viable in the world today, uh, TV commercials or radio commercials? And you'd be shocked and surprised to know that it's radio commercials because I know I listen to podcasts on the way to work. I can't watch a video on the way to work. And um, you probably have thousands of videos you subscribe to now on YouTube. But we're trying to get the viewership also up on the YouTube videos. Uh, I'd like to get them half as high as as what the listeners are, uh, you know, you know, get uh, 15, 2,000 listeners a week to your podcast, it would be nice to get half that many to the video just to check that out. So, But if you're there, give it a thumbs up. Uh, subscribe to that channel, and I'd love to have you over there on 42 Techno Man. All right, well, thanks, everybody, and have a great work week coming up. Uh, share some of this great office experience you got today. Uh, maybe you can actually launch Teams in your business, and we can help Microsoft keep it alive and well for a long, long time. Because I think it's a great, great program. I will talk to you next time. Take care. And so long from tips from the server room. Bye-bye for now.